We've talked about how the EMP will attenuate very quickly in the metal of an airplane, the outer skin of the airplane. But something we have not talked about yet is what happens when the EMP reaches the boundary between the air region and the aluminum body of the airplane. What will happen when the EMP reaches the body of the airplane? Let's consider a 1 megahertz plane wave propagating straight towards a flat sheet of aluminum, the same material the skin of the airplane is made out of. So this material too here is aluminum. The, according to our coordinate system defined here, the wave is propagating in the z direction. And the boundary between the air region and the aluminum is at z equals zero. We call this kind of a problem a half space problem because half the space is material one and half of the space is material two. This seems highly simplified, but we use it in electromagnetics for um, a lot in a lot of different scenarios. The direction of propagation of the wave incident on the metal is described by gamma hat. Uh, and I'm going to put an I here for the subscript. So it's going to have an I subscript standing for incident, meaning the incident wave. Gamma is the propagation constant. And gamma I here is equal to alpha 1 plus j beta 1 because we're in material number 1. The plane wave incident on the aluminum has electric and magnetic field components that'll be perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So we could define the electric field as pointing in the x direction or the y direction or some combination of the two. For convenience, let's say it's pointing in the x direction, so it'll be pointing straight up. So I'll label that as E vector phasor with an I for incident. And according to the right hand rule, the magnetic field must be pointing in the positive y direction. So say that's h vector phasor with an i in the superscript. We can write out an expression for the incident electric and magnetic field components of our plane wave in the region z is less than zero, so in this air region. In general, for the incident wave, we can write e vector phasor incident is it's pointing in the x direction, so of x hat, it can have some arbitrary amplitude and maybe some phase associated with constant phase. And we can have e to the minus gamma one, and it's a function of z, because it's propagating in the z direction. Now the coefficient e zero, or e naught i, right here, can be complex, just as we had for the voltage coefficient in the transmission line section of this course. So in general, E not I can equal some magnitude and some constant phase that's not a function of Z. So the phase phi not here is a constant phase and it doesn't change with spatial position. So for convenience, let's assume that there isn't a constant phase applied to all positions in space for this particular problem. So we're going to say um, that phi naught is equal to zero. So this whole expression, this whole part will just be equal to one. Also, let's say we have a normalized electric field amplitude of one volt per meter. So we're going to say E naught I is equal to one volt per meter. So then, I'm going to have to write over here. So then we can write E vector phasor I is x hat amplitude of one E to the minus gamma one Z. So lastly, we have gamma. The incident wave is in free space. So we can simplify our gamma one. Uh, alpha one is the attenuation constant and free space does not attenuate the wave. So for material one, alpha one is zero. And then we can say this is equal to x hat one e to the minus beta one z. We can use table 7-1 to calculate a value for beta. We'll be referring to this table a lot today. And by the way, in the exam, I'll be giving you table one, seven one. So you don't have to copy it down. Use table one to calculate what beta will be for material one. Remember, we're considering a one megahertz incident plane wave propagating in free space.